And one of those reasons was because I had an economics high school teacher that would sit all of the Latinos in the back of the class. And when I asked why the Latinos had to sit in the back, my friend and I got a response. And he said, because none of you will ever go to college. I shouldn't have let it get to me, but you're 13 and your teacher tells you this isn't the class you should take. And you have a 38% in the first exam, so your confidence goes down. So I went through school hating math, and I did the minimum. And I never thought about going to college. About 80% of Black and Latinx students in California are not meeting math standards. And we know that that's not about student ability, right? It's about all kinds of institutional structures that we've been talking about. And we know that that's also about structural racism and bias. We don't talk openly enough about the role of privilege um, in, in mathematics pathways. We still operate on the notion of, of, of hard work um, will, will get you uh, to the same place. I can't emphasize it enough that the purpose of math is not to make students miserable. It's not to instill fear in them, and it is not to create a pecking order among students. Do we have a math crisis on our hands? Why are we not, as a state, acting with more urgency? In designing for equity, this convening and others like it form a critical intersection of people working on constructing the mathematics of opportunity. As we move forward together and create a different future for the students and the communities who are counting on us all. For me, it is operating from this assumption that students are smart and now I am going to create structures in the space in which I teach so that all students see themselves as being smart. In order to create more opportunities, we are proposing the idea of creating branch pathways, courses that will prepare students, depending on their aspirations, for um, other uh, careers that may be closer to what they want to do. This point of doing away with placement, and instead of placement, starting after 10th grade with offering options to students, we have to switch from thinking of pathways as ability-based and make them uh, think of them more as aspiration-based. In many ways, I see the design aligning to what we know about how the brain works, which is we want to try to personalize the learning experience for any content. And by the time kids get into high school, the hope, we're not there yet, but the hope is that kids start to have a sense of who they want to be um, and the interests that spark them and design high schools in a way um, where kids can be able to go deeper into certain experiences. Uh, Latinx and African-American students um, uh, need to be recruited into STEM fields because um, they will not naturally think that they are, uh, those are options for them. We have all this, the data science coding. So we have this opportunity we didn't have, say 20 years ago, when any alternative to algebra sounded like folk ed. Everyone wants to know, do you hate math? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love math now. Yeah? Why? It's fun. Um, it's so weird to say, but I've come such a long way where now I go home and I get into the groove of solving the problems and I see a pattern and I see the logic behind it and it just becomes fun. We lose too many kids, too many students who don't see themselves as a part of this work. And I think it's essential, it is central to our work to help students see themselves as doers of mathematics and engage in the kinds of practices that doers of mathematics get engaged in. Yeah.